Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day and I'm wearing my grandmother's scarf. <laughs> Today will be episode 11, the final episode of A Day with D-Day. So I will be covering 2017 till today and uh, I'm going to be honest, this episode is going to be pretty vague and uh, it might be hard to understand. And I do apologize in advance, uh, but the closer I get to my heart, to the core of me, the more difficult it is to, for me to find the right words to express how I feel. So, like I always do, I need to stress that this series is about me, and it is only about me. It is a vlog. Uh, this series will not be for children. It will be unedited and raw. So if I show emotions or if I make a mistake or if I cuss by accident, I'm not going to stop, delete, and start over the file. Being genuine is much more important to me in this series than making the perfect YouTube video, you know, without mistakes. So if you have a problem with profanity or with emotional topics, this uh, might not be the series for you, especially if you decided to watch this episode first, you know, it'll be completely out of order. But uh, real talk, like I need to say this, uh, this episode, episode 11's True Power, really does come from watching and knowing the entire series. So my primary goal with this video and with the series is to promote awareness of oneself and also for me to chronicle my feelings uh, before I lose access to them. Uh, ac really what I mean is before I lose access to them in their most genuine form, you know? My feelings right now are real and they are true, but without the original stimulus, without the original cause, you know, an anchor point, you could say. Uh, I'm resorting more and more to memories and memories of memories, you know, and we all know that memories can be reprogrammed, you know, for better or for worse. You could be frustrated with somebody, you know, that if they leave their shoes laying around and you trip over them a couple of times, you can both argue about it, you know, and you can create a bad memory that way, you know, but what happens when you include that memory in your wedding vows, you know, as an example of us at our worst, you know, and then exactly a month later, you read that she included exactly the same example in her wedding vows to make exactly the same point, you know? And even last night, I uh, was finally okay to watching an episode of Mystery Science Theater by myself, which is a, a little bit of D-Day. You know, Mystery Science Theater is one of my special interests. I did also create a Discord tab for Mystery Science Theater now. <laughs> But I was finally okay to watch one completely by myself. And all of my angry memories that I had, you know, of her specifically getting bored and falling asleep, all of those memories turned into good memories. You know, I wish I could go back in time and ask her to lay her head on my lap, you know, instead of getting frustrated and getting up and turning off the movie, you know? She would, of course, wake up and apologize. And now I see what a complete waste of time that was. And I wish I could go back and I wish I could change the past, but I can't. So the primary purpose to this video and this series, you know, is I can make this video and I can watch this video in the future to remind myself that every memory can be a good memory. 
you know, that even these past four months, they served their purpose in making me a better person. And even in my future, these past four months can be changed into good memories as well. So if you could show your support, please hit the like button. Please subscribe for more content and hit the bell to be notified for more uploads to the channel. Uh, also consider leaving a comment. I'd love to hear your opinions and your experiences. And uh, like I always say, complete transparency. All of the free things that you can do, like leaving a comment, hitting like, sharing with your friends. Uh, I'm pretty sure clicking subscribe and clicking the bell also trigger the YouTube algorithm. So if you wanna help our channel grow and succeed, those are the tools, the free tools. Uh, so now you know exactly how, and I do encourage you. And I do honestly thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me on this journey. So thank you. And if you're ready, then uh, here is the final episode of A Day with D-Day. So like I said, this is the final episode and it will cover 27, 2017 to today. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna be completely honest, this episode will be extremely vague. And the reason why is because I am not ready for this chapter to be completely over yet. And uh, I will not focus on the person that I was with because uh, we, can, we can all agree that it doesn't matter what, what letter I assign her, everybody knows who I have been with the past two and a half years. So I will not compromise her ever. And instead I will talk about myself and only myself in the third person, first person and third person. So I will use symbolism, metaphors, similes, you know, all of those good things that I have learned in college <laughs> to try to express my feelings at my core as best as I can. And I will purposefully speak a little bit slower this time and maybe refer to my bullet points a little bit more often so that I don't compromise her in any form. I really do truly only want to speak about myself and how important the connection was to me. So, uh, and yeah, I completely, I completely plan on spoiling the image to the puzzle that I've been talking about at the very end of the episode. And uh, I will give a spoiler alert just in case you missed an episode or uh, you started with this episode first. I'll give a spoiler alert so that you have the opportunity to go back and watch the series or even rewatch it if you want to. But I don't feel like I am spoiling the image at this point. I feel like I am stating my heart and my feelings at this point. Uh, and then after that, I do truly have every intention of submitting and surrendering to the universe again, because I, I have realized that the spiritual process of surrendering to the universe is not as easy as one and done. This will be the third time that I have surrendered and I am trying to be done with my past, to file and sort it where it belongs so that it no longer affects my present and my future. And I have also understood the act of surrendering a little bit more now. Uh, it is not the same as giving up. It is faith. I'm surrendering to the universe that it is control and not I. My ego needs to step aside. I am not in control. The universe is in control. The universe has my best interest at heart 
and it will give me what I need. Not necessarily what I want, but it will give me what I need. And then to lighten it a little bit, I will not stop praying to the universe to give me what I want. <laughs> so let me start off with uh, my best friend that I brought up last episode. And uh, it is the end of 2017. My best friend O, he ended up buying himself a bunch of RunFest tickets. A whole bunch of them. He got them all on discount. And uh, he wanted me to join him on multiple camping trips. So not just camping once, not just going to RenFest for one of the themed weekends. I believe we went to four, if not even five themed RenFest weekends. And I felt so incredibly important to him. And absolutely necessary and uh, like totally useful and, and most importantly loved. I felt loved by him, you know, and I never asked him directly for anything. And he just kept giving and giving and giving, you know, and I kept saying thank you every single time he gave. And uh, this is important to me because gift giving is my love language. And I have mentioned it a, a bunch of times in the series that gift giving is my love language. And him giving, it meant everything to me. And uh, I've never had someone show me, you know, that I was this important to them. You know, that I mattered this much to them. And I really did feel like I was loved. And I remember that uh, I had an inability to express gift giving to my full potential. So it felt like he was giving more than I was giving. You know, he was giving more than I was giving and I was taking more than he was taking. It felt unbalanced and it filled me with, with slight negative guilt, you know, that I wasn't giving back as much. And I, I told him every time I vocalized it, you know, I said, I wish I could give back more. And every time he said, your friendship is all I need. You know, and uh, now that I wrote it down and really thought about it, you know, he meant those words. He truly did. He truly meant those words. They were not lies. My friendship was really all he needed. You know, and uh, I felt it in my heart and my mind. I can look back and I know that it was the truth. And at the time, I was unable to fully give back as much as I could. And really, the thing that was holding me back was money. If I had all the money in the world, I would shower the people that I love with gifts, not just with any gifts, but like gifts that truly show I know you and I love you for who you are. That is my gift giving. And I was working towards standing on my own two feet and I truly did want to return his love a hundred times over. I just ended up not having the opportunity to. But right then, you know, at that time, I was having such a blast with him and then I met her. My tiny candle is how I'll reference her. And uh, I was like, this is awesome. You know, let me use this to help me examine myself. You know, again, shadow work. Like I mentioned in my previous episode, I was working on my shadow. You know, illuminate and examine the darkness inside of me, my shadow, my darker side. So I held up my magnifying glass, you know, and I held up my tiny candle and, uh, you know, I held it up to my soul and uh, 
the candle illuminated what I was looking at so that I could get a better look at myself, you know, so that I could learn. And uh, like I poked and I prodded my own soul, you know, with different kinds of experiences and experiments and all that kind of stuff, you know, in various ways. And the candle burned brighter and brighter and I saw more and more. And uh, that is the key image that I want to convey is that I was looking at my shadow with a magnifying glass and I used my tiny candle to illuminate my shadow. And then what happened was, oh, he suddenly dropped me as a friend completely and out of nowhere. He said he was sorry. We couldn't be friends anymore. And uh, he said, if we see each other at a convention, if we happen to see each other at a convention, we can smile and we can wave at each other. You know? And he said everything was his fault, you know, since he was ending the friendship. And he was sorry. And I didn't understand. And I honestly still don't understand. I don't understand what happened. And I don't understand if I did something wrong. You know, I was, I was confused when it happened and I reacted out of anger and I slammed that door shut on him. You know, and I thought I was okay. You know, because I had my tiny candle, you know. And I was learning so much about my shadow. So I went back to it, you know, and I like to use the reference like uh, a man obsessed with his work, you know, uh, like, like some, some people know that men avoid feeling their emotions by tossing themselves into their work. Distraction, pretty much. And, uh, you know, my candle did speak to me told me that he was being manipulated, that I did nothing wrong, and that she understood how devastated I felt inside from losing him as my best friend out of nowhere. Because gift giving is my love language, you know? And he showed me that he truly loved me, you know, more, honestly, more than anyone that had come before him, you know? He taught me over four years, over the course of our friendship, four years, he taught me that I was worth the gifts in the first place and that it was okay for me to accept them. You know, even though I didn't, I couldn't give back as much as I, my heart truly wanted. And I know that before I met him, you know, whenever I was offered any form of gift, I would say, no, thank you. I wouldn't accept the gift because I honestly didn't believe that I deserved it, that I deserved any gifts, you know? And he taught me over four years, over a four year friendship, he taught me how to accept love. That's what it is. But what I got stuck with is how can you show someone that you truly love them and then just instantly stop. I, st I still don't understand. And I don't understand, you know, at the very end, he wanted to give me even more things while ending the friendship. It's kind of like he was trying to say, like trying to apologize by giving me even more, you know? And I didn't want anything of what he was giving me. And I felt like I needed to show him uh, that I loved him, you know, for who he was and not because of the things he was giving me. And, you know, I needed to prove that I loved him, you know, not because of the gifts, but because of the giving, you know? And I honestly, I didn't want anything but him in my life. And my mistake is that I never mentioned how upset I truly was from losing him as a friend. 
Like I never mentioned, I dropped it immediately and I pushed it way deep inside of me. And I acted like it didn't phase me at all. You know, I told myself, I don't need him. I have my tiny candle. That's how I consoled myself. And I never talked about how I was worried, you know, that he misunderstood me at the very end as not accepting his love in the end, you know. He, he tried to give me this massive berserker armor that we both built together over the course of an entire year. It was a cosplay. We together built this cosplay over an entire year and he tried to give me the full berserker armor while ending our friendship. And uh, I, I didn't accept the armor because I felt like I needed to prove to him that I loved him for him and not because he made me this armor, you know? And uh, I still don't know if I made the right choice because I don't know if I actually, if he misunderstood it as me rejecting his love at the very end since both of us were probably gift giving in our love language. So if I don't accept his gift, I'm not accepting his love, you know? And it would break my heart if I was misunderstood that instead of understanding I don't love you because of the gifts, I love you because of the giving, but then he understands it as I don't want your love at all. And I don't know if I made a mistake because he's gone now and I can't, I can't talk to him about it anymore. But the point is, you know, with the story is that I was absolutely devastated and I didn't show any of it to anyone, not even to my tiny candle. You know, and this is my primary personality flaw. I am afraid that if I reveal my true feelings when I am hurt, and other times as well, of course, you know, this is me being vulnerable. I am afraid that if I reveal my true feelings that I will lose even more. You know, so... I tossed myself back into my shadow work, you know, like, like a crazy man. <laughs> and I studied my soul with my magnifying glass and my candle, you know. And after this happened, the candle burned even brighter. That's what I'm going to say. Burned even brighter after this happened. Brighter and brighter, you know. And I wanted to learn more and more. I needed more and more. I was dealing with my grief by taking more. And what I found illuminating the, the shadow inside of me, what I found was that inside of me, I found a, a teeny, a teeny tiny flame. I found a tiny flame inside myself. I found light, you know? I found a tiny candle inside of me. And uh, I fully realized at that moment that inside of me was light. And I remember there was at one point during this time period, I mentioned that I was worried that the cork was going to pop and all of my darkness was going to spill out, you know? And I knew that I had a lot of repressed anger and hatred inside of me for C and everything that I went through in my past, and especially a lot of anger and hatred towards myself for allowing it to happen for so long. And I was worried that that cork would pop and all of my darkness would spill out. And back in March, that happened. And uh, what revealed itself was light. And I mean that honestly, that reference. And I felt myself change from that point on, like accepting 
the change that I was going through. I'm pretty sure I was already on my way to changing, but I accepted it at that moment, you know? That I wanted to be better than who I was. I didn't like who I was, I wanted to be better. And I wanted to be better for the person that I loved most in my life, you know? And I truly felt that I was letting go of my past, you know, and embracing the future at that moment. You know, so I asked myself, you know, what happened? What happened at that moment for everything to switch into something completely unpredictable, you know? And the way I had to explain it with myself, with my soul, with my heart, was that uh, what I slowly realized with all of my soul searching that I was doing is that I wasn't holding a magnifying glass with my tiny candle. What I was actually holding was a mirror. But I didn't realize that it was a mirror until the candle went out. You know, and I realized that I was not seeing myself this entire time. I was seeing her. I was seeing her reflection in the mirror. I saw her kindness, her love, you know, her sacrifice, definitely. You know, I saw her dedication. I saw her pride. I saw her understanding. I saw her acceptance. I honestly could write thousands of things down of how wonderful that, that flame was that I was watching, that I was looking at. And when that candle went out, you know, I was left in darkness. I was left in complete darkness. And, you know, when I finally accepted that it was gone, you know, I lowered the mirror that I had in my hand in the darkness, I lowered that mirror and I saw the candle again. You know, I saw the candle that was hidden behind the mirror that I was holding. And that was my tiny candle. And I realized that it was the same candle, the same flame as the reflection I was looking at. And I have been nurturing it ever since, realizing that, yeah, I'm surrounded in a lot of darkness, you know, but at my very core, I had a tiny flame of my own, you know? So I wanted to say thank you to O. You were my best friend for four years, and you taught me that it was okay to accept other people's love. That is huge. And you taught me that I was, that I deserved it, you know, and you had your reasons to flip on me and I still don't understand fully why, but I wish you the best. And I have absolutely no negative feelings towards you at all. The only thing that I have inside of me that I just can't shake is that I worry. And I truly worry that, I truly worry that he was isolated by a narcissist because love is very blind. And the girl that he was with reminded me of C. And I honestly, with my honest feelings, can look back and say that because she reminded me of C, I was not necessarily afraid of her, but I was very uneasy around her, you know? And I honestly pray to the universe that I am absolutely wrong. And I mean that completely. Nothing would make me happier than me being absolutely wrong in this case. Because, oh, deserves, he really does deserve to live the rest of his life in complete happiness. I really do want that for him. And, you know, because what he gave me 
is also what he deserves. You know, I am just left with regret, you know, that I'm not able to repay him um, for everything that he did for me because he did so much for me. And I know how I am right now. And I am so absolutely ready to give love. You know, and if the universe ever sends him back my way, you know, the one thing that I do want to express fully is that in the deepest, darkest darkness, deepest, darkest darkness, really, really D-Day, in, at the very end, you know, at the very end, you know, if, if, oh God, I hope not, but if he loses everything, you know, he will always have me. I will always be there. If he calls me and he needs me, I will respond. That's what I want to say without being melodramatic, you know? And this is the point in the video where I say, spoiler alert. You know, this is where I am going to express what is in the deepest core of my heart and my soul. The, honestly, the most fragile and vulnerable piece of myself, you know? It is the core truth that I have taken and it holds me together right now. You know, this is the core pillar of what makes me, me right now. So if you haven't seen the previous episodes and you want an opportunity to stop and go back and watch them or go back and rewatch them, you know, I would recommend it uh, so that this spoiler alert has the greatest effect. And uh, yeah, like this is the moment also in, uh, in episode one where I mentioned that I was gonna reveal something, not necessarily a twist, but something that will make rewatching the series even more. So like, uh, without me like beating the explanation to death, uh, if you watch all of the episodes and then watch the spoiler, it will have more of an impact. And it will also make a consecutive rewatch of the series even more enjoyable. That's how I wanna express it. And I hope that makes sense because I'm kind of confusing myself by explaining it too much, sorry. I'm just nervous. Oh, and my butt hurts. <laughs> so, spoiler alert. This all will be in the form of a letter. You know, it is a letter to my own soul. You know, it is the very definition of a twin flame. It is uh, both, it is both at the same time, my words to myself, to my soul, and to my twin flame. So, to my twin, you know who you are. The feelings I have for you, I feel for myself all of a sudden. The forgiveness I have for you, I have for myself and for my past. You know, the love, the pride, the admiration, the wonder, the full potential, the confidence, the courage, the unbelievable talent, you know, everything that I saw in you, I see it inside of myself now as well. You know, this is what I meant by the awakening that I've had this month in August, you know. This is what I meant by my shield of virtue. I have come to the realization, you know, that every maybe in my soul, every single maybe that I have mentioned in this entire series, you know, in my entire life, that's all they have been. They have been maybes, you know. 
I found the person that I have been searching for since fourth grade. In November of 2019, you know, because if you go back and rewatch the November channel update at the very end, I have a very, very special clip that I will never delete. I will never forget, I will never delete. I knew deep in my heart that you were the one. And what happened between us in March, of course, it made me doubt, you know? How could I have been so absolutely wrong, you know? And I wondered if this was the same exact thing that happened between me and O. And the more I thought about it, you know, the more I understood that I was not wrong. You know, my mind fought, I fought, my mind fought my heart over and over again, sitting on that park bench, over and over again, and even after, you know. And I really did worry for a while there that I completely lost it, you know that I was in a completely delusional state of denial, a denial so strong that I was honestly forever lost, that there was no return from the denial that I was stuck in. You know, I worried that everything I ever felt and everything I ever thought, I worried that everything was wrong. And then I, it just hit me, you know, and I fully understood, you know, my soul did calm down, my heart and my mind stopped racing, stopped going crazy. And I saw the truth, which is the, the image of the puzzle. And I fully understood, you know, the truth. What I really, what is the most important thing to me, what I need to express is that my love for all of the people that I have expressed for in this series, my gratitude for everyone that I expressed in this entire series, you know, uh, in everything that I've experienced in my life so far, you know, uh, I can go to the extreme romance romanticism that I still can't pronounce correctly, the extreme romanticism that I have and the extreme realism that I have inside of me. You know, if you, if you took my entire life of ups and downs, you know, and you took them and you compressed them all into a singular source, you know, comparatively, you know, everything that makes me, me. All of my feelings and thoughts from the last 36 years of existing, it is only a fraction of the feelings that I feel for you. Comparatively, it is a grain of sand. I could honestly, I can honestly make a thousand episodes, you know, expressing every single positive emotion that I have ever felt in my entire life, and it would not come close to the love that I feel for you. Like, I could express every single negative aspect of my life, you know, and I can multiply it by a thousand. And I would still think that finding you was worth all of that pain that I went through in my past. And honestly, it bothers me that I put my abuse and shame chapter on private because the point of that episode was not to gain pity, but for it to really drive home this point that I would go through that a thousand times over again if it meant meeting you. 
I truly feel that everything has led me to you, to meeting you. And everything that I have gone through in the past four months, you know, even, even the past four months, it has prepared me for you. And I honestly, I would do everything, I would do everything over a thousand times. Gift giving is my love language. And this series is my gift to you. I am gifting myself. Like I said in one of my previous monthly updates, I love you with everything that is me. That is what I meant. You are the person that I have been searching for my entire life, since fourth grade. You know, everything has led me to you and I have never settled. I have never settled for a maybe. You are the one. And I am completely of sound mind. I fully understand that physically, you may or may not ever come back. And the chances are very high that you will never even watch this video. But I always feel you near me. You are with me in every decision that I make and in everything that I do. I truly, I truly understand the Beast's song in the live action Beauty and the Beast now. The second half of that song is what I am going through now. I can say that honestly. And I have understood that even when I am completely alone, I feel you with me. And I will never give up on that. I will always be aware. There's no way for me to go backwards after gaining awareness. But there are so many things that I've learned, you know, and one of the key ones is that giving up on myself is giving up on you. And also giving up on you is giving up on myself. And I fully understand that you are wonderful. So I am wonderful. You know, you are worthy, definitely. And therefore I am worthy. And the most important thing, you are enough. And I am enough. And this amazing awakening that I've gone through this month, the loneliness and all of my self-doubt that I have felt my entire life, the, all of my insecurities, you know, all of my self-loathing, all of my hatred that I have towards myself, it, it's gone. It has just dissolved and vanished on me now. And I can say it's because of you. And I will always be there for you. Like all I feel inside of me is love. And no one will change my mind or my heart. Like I feel like they are finally after so many years, my mind and my heart are finally on the same page. And I will move forward from this point on, you know, the series is now over. This is the final episode and I will keep my heart open for you. But I also completely understand that you may never come back. 
And I will also, because of that, because I am, I do have a clear mind, I am open to the universe showing me what path I need to take next. So with that, I surrender for a third time. And I know my purpose in life. I did state it at the beginning of the series. My purpose in life was to find my twin. And now that I have found her, what is my purpose now? And I fully understand that my purpose now is to be with my twin. Because after being with you, I cannot be with anyone else. I have honestly, absolutely no interest in being with another person. And I fully understand that all of this had to happen, you know, for me to become fully aware of myself. You know, I never would have, I never would have truly understood how much love I have inside of me. You know, I never would have realized how much love I am capable of had this not happened. The awakening and the awareness that I'm talking about, you know, it has completely obliterated the old me, which is good. He had to go. <laughs> and I did mention those tiny feelings that I had in my previous video, mentioning me being a phoenix and being reborn, you know. I know now that that phoenix was not me. That phoenix was inside of us. You know, it is our flame. And I can feel it inside of me now, but it can't fly. And I understand that only in union can this phoenix fly. And I wanted to say that we have always understood that ending our existence in the 3D, it will result in union, if one of us ceases to exist. We've always understood that. And what I have come to understand, especially this month, is the exact opposite, is that union, that will not cause an, ex an ending to our existence in the 3D. This feeling of needing to merge on my part us forming union in the 3D will not negate our existence. That, what I feel is fear and pride is in the way. I feel that we are getting in our own way. I have found out that we are both life path, master number 11s, and I know there can be a lot of you know, pseudoscience, now this guy's lost it completely. I am very spiritual and I am also very academic. I have both extreme intelligence or academics inside of me and extreme feelings and romanticism inside of me. I realized that we are both master path, life path 11s, you know. Our birth dates were written in the stars exactly 11 years apart. And I wanted to say that we are literally a match made in heaven. The synchronicity, both before we met and during our relationship, was absolutely uncanny. The connection that we formed was absolutely unique and one of a kind. And I do know that the universe was giving us 
everything we needed and right when we needed it. And it still is. I can still feel it. And I remembered, I remembered specifically that you did mention seeing 11s right before meeting me. You mentioned that at the beginning of our relationship. And now I am the one seeing 11s everywhere. And it started with me realizing that our anniversary was on 11-11. Like I said in our, in my life in a day video that I uploaded. And I fully understand now that you were the divine masculine to my divine feminine. And I understand now that we were completely unbalanced. And I know that I lost myself in creation, in creating, and I took you beyond your means to enable me. But I do feel us heading towards balance now. You know, and I will continue working on myself I will continue to try to challenge myself to channel more masculine, divine masculine energy, the energy of ability, of ableness, I guess, you know, and I will channel less on the feminine energy of creation with my arts and with my desires. So this is my wish, you know, my 1111 from this point on, it will be union. And I will be exactly where you left me, exactly where I have always been in this house, you know. And I never mentioned it, but this house is on my name, so this house does belong to me now. And I will be waiting here for you to come home, you know? And I will be yelling, no God, no God, please no, 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 no. <laughs> that will be my goofy little final office quote for you. So like I said, the last things that I said in person, the door is open and I love you. See if I can do it right. I really love you. And I hope to see you soon. <laughs>